So to start with, let's talk about the Emmys. You know something that has to do with the very first Emmy that you come across? And before that Emmy shows up, you can see that it's stored underneath the environment. Damn. They store it like that? Uh, out of rounds, uh, boundary break, all credit to him. Or sh Shazez, Shazez. And the second that it's called in, it's just basically warped into place. <laughs> Damn, dude. That's pretty cool, actually. Why do they do so this? With, let's talk about the Emmys. You know something that has to do with the very first Emmy that you come across? So, the, can't they just, like, spawn the Emmy in normally? This is a pre-rendered scene. No, it's not a pre-rendered scene. Um, it's very common. And this is not pre-rendered. I, I made a mistake. Um, spawning may take time. Oh, Okay. Before that Emmy shows up, yeah, yeah, it's real time. I, I made a mistake. The environment. But... And the second that it's called in, it's just basically warped into place. Oh, uh, okay. So it goes to XY position. So it's already loaded. Later in the game. Then just the XY position after. The right, huh. And the second that it's called in for the cutscene, you can see that it moves from here to there. And many of the other cutscenes that use the Emmys have similar situations. But to move on from that, let's talk about this one little interactive background scene and show you a close up of the little critters that get attacked by the first boss. Now, I'm going to have a whole segment. Yo, I love this whole area too. Certain creatures from this game, since so you don't really get a good close up look of any of these things because of the pulled back camera huh. and, the, and the 2D aspect. But after that segment is done and over with, I just want to show you where the boss is, as well as the little critter that he eats in the first place. One thing you notice is that the critter doesn't deload, and neither does the boss technically. It's just really hard to see because he's cloaked, but there are little visual cues to kind of give you an idea of where the boss is supposed to be. And you can see that those visual cues are still stored underneath the water level. Speaking of that first level boss, huh. I wanted to show you what the opening cutscene for this- Wait, water is. level? Oh, just the level of- okay. I was confused. Um looked like at another angle and one of the most interesting things about this cutscene is that there's a portion of it in which you can see a first person perspective of samus sliding underneath the boss but if you look at the scene from another angle you can see that they still use the model of samus aaron sliding underneath the boss meaning that the camera is positioned just in front of her and you can get an idea of when that first person perspective comes into play because there's a hud overlay that the developers use during these cutscenes. and despite the fact that we can move the camera anywhere that hud overlay stays with us making a great indication of when that scene was supposed to play out and now let's talk ah, about trade. This is the neat. Cutscene used to I have seen a lot of this stuff, <laughs> the great stuff. I, I like I like looking at this stuff. It's neat how they do it. To introduce Kraid, and you can see that they added an orange hue to the scene by using an orange square texture and then adding a transparency to it. But more importantly than that, I think a lot. Of oh, oh, this is badass actually. So so the way they do this is they have a camera, right? So then the program in it. They have the camera, which is like programmed to be in specific spots. And they have like those textures, which are just in front of the camera, like the lens, like you would put on like a camera. Because this is all just happening. Like this is just. A lot of people want to know what's going on with Kraid below the lava level. And you'll see that he's fully modeled, but he doesn't have fully bottled legs. His legs! He gets a fully textured bulb. Now, I imagine hey, thanks for the three months. Because this gives the developers a level of freedom to move Kraid outside the lava level to any degree that they wanted to without worrying about accidentally showing the player a cutoff point for the model, while also not having to worry about two things regarding the legs. One, having to model it in the first place, and two, incidentally taxing the Switch's hardware in any sort of way. Also, this is- Yeah, I mean, goes that makes sense, right? Like, if, if it had legs, it'd be weirder. Why would they ever put legs there? It just makes more sense. Just to eliminate it as much as possible. After you defeat him, you can see that he fully submerges himself underneath the lava, only to be then unloaded by the developers. Yep. And before we move on to more cutscenes... I want to see... I wonder if this video goes over when you go to a LUN, what's happening to Kray. That'd be weird. I don't think that's possible, is it? No. I don't know how he's doing this, but the areas here to really give you a sense of scale for some that, that would be impossible to see clearly. Well, you could trigger the flag, couldn't you? You could trigger the event flag that Alun has. And now a quick word from our sponsor. All right. I got a service here that I know is really good for my family. Sorry. Right. Well, as additional background elements spawn into the stage at the. 
the boss. You can see that Samus is stored out of bounds when the cutscene starts and is posing a hilarious <laughs> her feet scrunched into her shins. And for this split second, you can see that there are two models for Samus, one for the Morph Ball and one for Samus What herself. the fuck? And once the cutscene's done showing off the Morph <laughs> They're just drag her in. over to Samus, who's been getting into place this entire time. Also, you can see the exact moment in which the boss spawns, and not only that, the generator, which is the reason that Samus is even here at all, has a second one that is loaded up just for this cutscene. The one that is used in game is Holy shit. Is that What what the fuck is this thing? Is this huge ass tail even used? And why are these still loaded in? These crumble blocks. That's weird. Cuz this is <clears throat> That's interesting. Still stored right behind it, and even clipping. Or these, uh, these breakable blocks, not crumble. Now, towards the end of the game, when Samus goes up into Ravenbeak's ship, there's this great but brief scene where Samus goes up, and you can see the bottom of the ship. Well, pan the camera out from when that cutscene's over, and show you where the ship is stored, which is well, well behind the camera outside the boundaries. But there's something else to talk about with this ship as well. Why wouldn't they unload it? It's surprising. At the top of the ship, there's a low-poly version of the final room in which you fight Ravenbeak. And for huh. some reason within this low-poly version, there seems to be an indication of beta elements that weren't used in the final game. Some of I, I love this shit, dude. I love seeing this shit. The Chozo statue seem to be holding cubes instead of just their swords. And when you look at the real room in which this low poly version is based off of, they're not holding anything different from the other Chozo that they stand next to. It's like, it's so cool to see the back end of these things, you know? For, for the developers, it's like, yeah, I've looked at this a billion times. And like one of them probably just drew a penis somewhere on a model, like out of bounds, but you know. Now you might it's cool to see the beta elements and like the so thought process that it's supposed to be their fists to which I will say I thought about that as well and took the camera inside the cube yeah. only to reveal that they have the same hands as the other statues meaning that these cubes were added for some reason and we'll never know why now here's one of the final scenes of wait the cubes were added the camera inside the cube only to reveal that they have the same hands as the other statues meaning that these cubes were added for some reason and we'll never know why. Now, here's one of the final oh. scenes of Raven. Yeah, I don't know. And you'll see that any I mean, that's that probably... <clears throat> they're probably just random, you know. The camera is focused off of Ravenbeak. His entire body disappears. This is so that the camera doesn't clip into the Ravenbeak model while still showing a perspective that's near where his body's at. But more impressive than that, there's some footage here that Post Posture has shared that'll be really interesting to you guys. In the area where Samus talks to Adam for the last time, you can see an empty final boss stage is already present and placed directly next to it. As the stage progresses, the two areas become merged and the elements necessary for the cutscene move into place. This was done to create the transition effect we see where the Atom stage seems to break away and become the boss stage. Thank you, sir, and here you- Did they do that because of processing? Like it would take too much processing to uh, have them combined in the first place? Or why? why would they separate it and then just combine them? To load them gradually? Couldn't you just load everything behind the atom stuff gradually? I don't know how it works, but... Oh, for clipping? Alright, see you, Kel Charge. Take it easy. There could, there could be clipping issues or something? With, like, the, you know, the models or the shapes or... Huh. Here you go, here is another zoom out of the volcano area. Once again, showcasing the scale and the techniques used for some of these dioramas that On are lighting, used okay. these really elaborate backgrounds. I'm, yeah, it's probably like st stupid, easy things to figure out, but it's, uh, <clears throat> as a non-game developer myself, it's fun to like think about why things were done. All right, now that we're done looking at cutscenes, let's look at in-game environments and models. The cool thing about Samus is that inside the arm cannon, you can find all sorts of things. But in this example, I'll show you that you can see the missile bulge that pops open when you hold down the missile button. It doesn't always show up there, but in this case, it did. But Samus is the gift that keeps on giving. She actually no has one say it, chat. things to talk about. Taking the camera inside of her giant shoulder balls could show you that her shoulders are completely modeled. Now, why this is the case, I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. When we even as a dev is interesting out of devs. Yeah, I, I assume there's like so many different ways to solve problems, right? Reasonable guess is that it allows the shoulders to move independently of the balls, which gives the animations of the character more freedom. And the other more out there speculation is, well, Samus started off with the fusion suit and that fusion suit 
had no balls on his shoulder, and we may be looking at a modulated version of a model that was more closely resembling the Fusion design. Anyways, taking the camera inside of the Atom computers can show you that there's a modeling on the other side of his device. And this is a rendering that you can't normally see. Looping the camera around to the backside of this Chozo statue can show you that it's fully modeled on all sides, and in fact, there's some neon lights for its back. It also allows you to see how it awkwardly does not have a leg on its right side, making the inner thigh area look a little incomplete. And then there was this area here we could see some Chozo armor, and this is really, really cool. You don't really get a great look at this, but it's very, very similar to Samus's suit or Ravenbeaks if you look at the feet. But what's really cool is that they seem to be like a beta design having a bubble helmet made out of a type of glass. Isn't this just... Because this shit is in Kataris as well. <clears throat> All these same models. Isn't this just like Ravenbeak doing his shit trying to clone? Yeah, it's, it's supposed to look like Samus. Because, that's, well, not supposed to, but like even Ravenbeak has similar armor. You know? Now here's an area where you can only just barely see the background. But taking the camera out can show you that there's a lot more modeled here than the player gets the chance to see. Now these buildings are not fully modeled, but they do have some 3D depth to allow itself to look good in a 3D space. Yeah, or like Chozo armor. Um, here's another look at the Samus model. Occasionally, there'll be scenes where you can see Samus's face, or rather, just her eyes through the visor. The game, oddly enough, never lets you see <laughs> Samus's full face. Ah, don't look, chat. Oh, those are her. No problem. A fully modeled mouth those and are her lips. Nose. And you can even see more of her hair that's modeled as well. This all shows. And if we go down hair. south, you can see that they even modeled her. P in eyes and her signature blonde hair even though the lighting makes it look a little darker here but anyways that's not a great look at what her face looks like so i'm going to send it <sighs> over to post posturus who has footage from his own channel that shows you the entire face in full in case you're wondering i gave myself the metroid suit early so it has a nice side effect of not rendering the mask during these scenes so we get a clear shot of her face Huge thank you to She Says for bringing me in to tag team this one. If you're not already subscribed, do it. So we'll be talking about the experiment boss later on in this episode, but for a short recap, there is a boss that is being experimented on and becomes an imposing threat to Samus at a certain point in the game. But you see phases of this boss as you go throughout your adventure. Like the example I've been showing you just now, where there is technology injecting and prodding this giant beast. <coughs> However, in a different area of the game, you can see what I assume is just a failed experiment well before yeah, I, this stuff is everywhere. I, I found this stuff pretty neat. Or any sort of transformation, because this creature that's pretty well hidden in the background has anatomy that's very similar to the clip that I just showed you with the spiky abdomen and limbs on the on the side of the body it shows you a starting point that's not explicitly shown to the player like the clip that was first shown what's the samus doing water boss here and what's really cool is they Who? The camera oh yeah inside of it and i saw pink buttons then very quickly i pieced it together this is the boss's tentacles fully retracted because if you look inside the model when there's more tentacles outside the body you'll find that these quote-unquote pink buttons are now missing aka being used for their purpose which is that they are tentacles you can even see i forgot this boss existed i'm gonna be honest used in the scene that i just exampled now these crows are used incredibly briefly as Samus enters a certain area. You'll just see birds flying away and they're silhouetted during those scenes as well. But what's really surprising is that they have an idle animation. And of course I have to show you that because this counts as unused animations, AKA unused content. Now here's something I just wanted to show you guys. It's kind of funny. Now when you're not in a certain area, it's very typical that the rest of the map gets called out or clipped out. But there is a foreground layer for Metroid Dread to cast some shadow and keep the focus on the environment itself. And as you're going to see in this scene here, it doesn't call out that foreground layer, leaving behind what looks like a map, which is kind of cool. Here's another thing about Samus I didn't mention huh. earlier. See, when you charge the Omega Cannon, you get this giant spirit bomb looking ball that forms at the tip of the arm cannon. But if you manipulate the camera during this scene, you can see that, uh, that giant ball. Do you want to leave Twitch? This is why you stream on YouTube? I don't, I've don't. i never streamed on YouTube. There's just uh, premieres on YouTube. It's only a texture. It is not what? a 3D particle effect. Very no! Sneaky resource management. Here's a left behind beta element for you. In this room where you first used the multi-missile, the developers originally placed some Chozo armor with the cowl that is used in other parts of the game. But I guess to spice it up, the developers instead used this statue that the player normally gets to see. But without ever removing the original element, you could see what the developer's original intention was. Damn, they just threw that bitch right behind. They're like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Just get, get behind this, this other model we're gonna use. And once again, before we move on to a segment... That was that Tony's model. They just threw Tony's model back there. They're like, we'll keep it in, but... 
You keep it in, thank you. I just throw it behind another model. Talk about the room in which you fight it. Now, this is a very interesting discovery. During the cutscene where you're introduced to the experiment boss fight, there is a metallic encasing that's completely unseen by the yeah. player, as well as a giant, giant cylinder that actually clips through the sky dome that is also never seen by the player. Why these elements are here, I have no idea. DLC? They disappear by the time you actually start playing the game again. Now, whenever Ravenbeak is firing his laser, you can see that it clips into the ground, but I always wanted to know how far it actually goes. <laughs> it turns out Ravenbeak's beam is really, really long, like absurdly long. It would take about 40 Samuses to match the length of Ravenbeak's beam. And then there's this section of the game where there's an aquarium in the background. I want to take you in here. It's actually really surreal for me because when you look up and around, you can see so many more fish than you would imagine. I know that they're probably used in different areas of the game, but still to see them all loaded in at once and just swimming around in the void is just odd. Couple that fact with the background that's used is completely stark white and is only manipulated by the color change of the aquarium windows. Makes some awfully surreal imagery, I'll tell you that. This, this is really neat how they do this. Anyways, let's do another zoom out. This one is of the tram system. I thought I wanted to see the entire ocean in tram the rooms. These are cool. The ocean spans for quite a ways. It's insane. Well, it's because this is where you come from when you're <clears throat> being loaded in, right? So they don't want to. And they're like the the camera's kind of over here and right, like pans up, we're that look way. At character models up close. There's a lot of enemies that we can look at here, but of course we want to start off with Samus herself. When you lose in Metroid Dread, the only time you get to see a fully modeled suitless Samus is when she dies. But unfortunately, very unfortunately, in game, there's this bloom effect that immediately starts as soon as she's shown. And so even taking the camera over here doesn't really show you the finer details of this model. And that's why I was able to get the help of Finalizer. Finalizer was nice enough to share with me. Oh the yeah, I did see this from the game itself, and you could see that there's lots of details to the Samus model. One, it has the iconic blue eyes instead of the green that I showed you earlier, and two, she even has her mole. In fact, one of the things I noticed while looking at the model in game is that the hair is separated from the scalp. And so by looking at the model in the model viewer and removing everything but the head, you can see that her scalp is fully modeled and is even left with a buzz cut. Anyways, I'm going to show you a close up of several enemies from the game. And while I'm showing you some of the enemies that don't need additional commentary. All right, I'm going to start a run. But yeah, it's really cool to see. Well, they knew some nerds would totally go through and try to like extract the models and stuff, so. Like, all right, we'll put a mole on Samus.